Happy New Year. For the first video of the new year, we have uh, 19 cars to take a look at. And we're going to get started straight away with a couple of brand new castings from Mini GT. Um, the first one is this Bentley Flying Spur. So, as we've seen from Mini GT, the Bentleys that they're putting out are absolutely fantastic. So they, they've done the, the Bentley Continental GT and the Bentley Continental GT3 race car. Um, this is in the test version, so it's all black. But these are these are fantastic. Some of my favorite castings um, of the last year or so. And now we get the Flying Spur. This is uh, this is actually a Christmas release. Um, so this is the Reindeer Eight. So you can see uh, the uh, the box art here. Uh, fortunately, the car itself is not super uh, Christmas themed. It does have some graphics on it. But it's uh, it's not wild and crazy like their their last Christmas release. Like if you remember this one, this Land Rover Defender 90, which is kind of wacky and came with some figures and stuff. Um, it's just kind of a fun, cool release, um, but it's very very Christmas themed. This is in kind of a a very dark red. Uh, metallic red with some uh, some graphics on the side here and then lots of gold trim which gives it a kind of festive look uh, but it's not overtly Christmas which is which is a good thing um, I believe the license plate is probably Chinese although I could be wrong about that uh, but as with all the Bentleys that they have put out so far this is this is a very nice casting um, Obviously, the Flying Spurs is Bentley's luxury four-door sedan. Uh, not nearly as sporty as the uh, Continental, but still a pretty pretty cool car and, uh, and a great addition to the Mini GT lineup. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, seeing what other versions of this come out because it, uh, it looks to be quite good. Then next from Mini GT, another new casting, um, the Honda S2000. This is a Laguna Blue Pearl. is number 287 and the other one was uh, number 285 so st 1000s a you know tiny little convertible this is a kind of a metallic blue and uh, this uh, this getting this out of the box this actually looks a lot better than I was expecting um, they did do some little paint detail behind the lens headlights and uh, some paint details behind the the lens uh, tail lights. Um, and it's uh, overall this looks this is pretty this is a pretty cool looking release. You get a little antenna there that's rubberized, and then the interior is all black. And this is I think the weakness on this this particular casting, and maybe a little bit of a weakness uh, for Mini GT overall doing these convertibles. Um, and that they don't they don't add any additional detail into the you know they have it's well molded um, the the interior is very nice but there's no additional painted detail uh, to give it some contrast or anything and I think that's what you have to give up to to get the price point that that Mini GT sells for um, so it's you know that's probably a perfectly acceptable trade off but overall this is a this is a very nice release as well. Next up, we're going to look at this Tarmac Works. Um, but before I do that, I've got to reassemble these boxes. Otherwise, I lose track of which part goes with which box. Um, so uh, a couple weeks ago or last week or whenever it was, I picked up this uh, Toyota Hilux in an off-road version, which, uh, which is fantastic. And it really surprised me how much I like this truck because... I have you know no particular affinity for Toyota pickup trucks otherwise, um, but I thought this was a really fantastic release. And uh, now uh, I also picked up the this uh, other version, which is One Make Race. So this is this is the same casting, but it's uh, it's given a different treatment. It's lowered, and it is um, uh, intended for circuit racing, you know, on a road street. Uh, not road 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 course racing, and so this comes in this uh, 
container packaging, which is very different than the typical uh, Tarmac Works, you know, acrylic box. Yeah, this is your, your typical Tarmac Works packaging. You have the container packaging, so it looks like a shipping container, which I think is pretty cool. Um, it has some, some nice qualities. It's a little bit smaller than the, than the typical uh, acrylic case, which I think is a very good thing. Um, and then it also, if you had multiple of these, they would interlock, just like actual shipping containers do, so you can stack them a little bit better. And uh, um, they're pretty cool. And they're also a little bit easier to open because this part just flips up and then the, the, ve or the vehicle s slides out, which is a kind of a nice feature. But I don't know what the logic is behind when they use this packaging and when they use the other packaging and the, you know, they have oil can packaging. They have all kinds of wacky packaging in reality. Um, which is actually a little bit annoying. I wish they would just pick a pick a style and kind of stick with it. Um, <clears throat> but they've used this packaging, you know, on some Hobby 64 releases such as this one and uh, on Global 64, uh, the Bugatti uh, Zonda R that they put out, they use this container packaging for that as well. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling about the packaging and we're going to focus on this model. So... Um, you do have to put the mirrors on, on this, which is a little bit disappointing. You can see there are little holes there um, where the mirrors go, and you would have to glue them on yourself. Um, so that's that's a little little uh, unfortunate that they they make you do that, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. Um, so most of the time they do come with them, like the other version of this truck. It came with the mirrors. And maybe this is a limitation of this particular packaging. Maybe this, the way that this sits in here, you know, there's not enough room for the mirrors. I don't know. Um, anyway, so this is, overall, this is a very nice looking, looking model, as, as most Tarmac Works models are. Um, my first couple of Tarmac Works models that I purchased, I wasn't super impressed with them, The uh, at least the Hobby 64 releases. I've been a big fan of the Global 64 series, but Hobby 64 seemed to just not be quite up to snuff quality-wise for the price. Um, but the last few releases that I've picked up, uh, that I, it has changed my opinion. And they seem, just like you know 64, they seem to really be stepping up their game. And, uh, and improving the quality of their releases. And this one will even roll, which is, uh, you know, not, not a guarantee with Hobby 64 releases. So it's very nice now that they're at least try seem to be trying to, to keep them rolling. This one rolls as well. Um, and, uh, you know, even though that su shouldn't be super critical for a, for a model that's really intended to just sit on the shelf, um, you know, it's, it's something that uh, some people like. And I am one of those people. So overall, it's a very nice release. And I do like this container packaging in general. If we can screw this uh, screw in a little bit so we can put it back together. It's a kind of cool concept. I'm going to keep the mirrors with that because i got to put those on later. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Next up, from M2... Uh, this is from Auto Drivers Release 78. We get the 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona Hemi in a hooker, hooker headers livery. And this is a really cool looking version of this car. Gray with uh, red stripes on the tires, and it's just kind of it's kind of mean looking, which I think is pretty cool. Red interior, giant steering wheel. That's kind of interesting. This thing is huge. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Little blurry. Sorry. Focus, focus. I'm having a hard time focusing in there. That's okay. All right. Um, yeah, this looks. These black wheels with the red stripes look really good. They did a reasonable job of keeping the stripes around, although they're a little bit off-center. Um, 
nice big black wing on the back. This looks really cool. Historically, I have not been a huge M2 fan, but it's another brand that I'm actually softening to. I used to complain about their quality a lot, and we'll see. There's a few other M2 models we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, we'll see how... Uh, how their quality is but green light has had so many quality problems that they've overshadowed M m2 in my mind as far as that issue goes um, we will not be looking at any green light today um, this will be a green light free video which is has not been the case lately but green light will return next week but that looks that's just the cool looking release all right next up uh, from Sparky, this uh, Porsche 911 RSR LM GTE. Um, so this is from, uh, it's finished second at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2019. Uh, this is actually a model I've had for a while, and I just have never taken it out of the package. And I wanted to get it out now because the next model we're going to be looking at is very interesting. So... We have some more Mini GTs coming, and uh, we'll see those after we take a quick look at this very cool Porsche 911 RSR. So this is the GTE spec, or in the U.S., the GTLM spec car. And, uh, you know, this particular one was at Le Mans, so this would be a, considered a GTE car. And it's very, very cool, as all Sparkies are very detailed the livery is will be as accurate as they can possibly make it and in the in i haven't compared this particular one to the photos but in in the past when i've looked at other models they have uh they have fairly accurately represented the liveries and done a very good job of it you even get the porsche on the bottom of the wing and let's see can we can we get any kind of look into the interior here it's going to be difficult. Yeah. I think it's all black. I don't think Sparky... You know, Sparky's at a lower price point than, um, you know, brands like Tarmac Works Hobby 64 or Inno 64. So they're, at those price points, heavily detailing the interior is not really possible, which for me is perfectly fine because, you know, other than, you know, when you first get a model, how often do you really look at the interior? <clears throat> For me, at least, not often. Um, but, yeah, so this is very cool. So we're going to keep him right there. And we're going to pull out a couple other models. So we've, you know, we've seen this Corvette C8R. This is from Mini GT. We'll add him there. And then we have, from Mini GT as well, we have the Ford GT LM in the test car livery. So this all-black livery. And now, from Mini GT, we get the first version of the Ford GT um, LM GTE Pro number 68 so the racing livery and this is uh, from 2016 24 hours of Le Mans and this is the single release so this is the race winner version there is actually also a four car release where they have put out all four cars that ran at Le Mans that year and the, the liveries uh, for all four of those cars. Um, I will probably end up picking that one up as well, even though it will end up duplicating this car, as far as I know. And the other cars, they're all the same livery, so there's just very minor differences, like the, the number here, and then some of the colors, like the colors across the roof here and down here in the bottom, are the only real differences between the cars, um, as far as I know. But, yeah, this is... You know, as you would expect from Mini GT now, this this looks fantastic. It's an accurate livery on a very, very nice model. Very nice headlight detail. And then tail light and exhaust detail in there. And it's all, of course, open flying buttresses here. And just a just a beautiful release. So yeah, this is, looks looks really good. It's 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 really is getting kind of amazing how good the quality 
N164 scale is. Looks like maybe these mirrors are a little crooked, but um, that's a minor issue. It just the, the models are getting so good. And so now, you know, we can move the test car out of the way, but you have three of the five, I think there were five cars that ran in the GTE class at, the, at Le Mans that year. The other two, um, there's a Ferrari 488 GTE that should be coming from Tarmac Works. And then I'm hoping, because they now have Ferrari licensing for race cars. They don't have it for road cars, just for race cars. Um, so there will be a 488 GTE coming from them. And I'm hoping that since they have the Aston Martin license as well, um, that we'll eventually see the Aston Martin Vantage GTE. And that would be very, very cool to see. But anyway, it's a nice... I, I love you know, Le Mans. It's my favorite race, and I love the cars that have raced there forever. I mean, from the 20s through to the present day. Any model that I can get for a race car from Le Mans is going to excite me. So, changing speed completely, though. Um, another M2 release. It's really cool-looking yellow 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air. And again, this is Auto Drivers Series 78. And this thing off the base and this is a very nice livery the uh, two screw thing on from M2 is very inconvenient okay yeah this is fantastic these wheels look great so you've got different wheels in the front and the back because you've got kind of a drag drag width wheel although it's not a slick it does have tread on it um, and just nice chrome details on the front chrome headlights and then you've got uh, chrome details on the back with the little inserted detail in the is it inserted no it's probably just paint on the on the bumper but this is yeah this is a beautiful beautiful release it's very cool looking black interior can't really see much of anything in there um, I'm not gonna actually it's, it looks like it's two-tone say I'm not gonna bother trying to get a better look in there but yeah it is it's a two-tone it's got a two-tone look accurate looking kind of steering wheel so yeah m2 did a good job on this one you had holly ellis fest on the rear window very nice very cool car and these are these are auto drivers so these are even though it looks like the hood should open they they do not it's the same on this one next up so this is a, a bit of an unfamiliar brand. I have shown these models before, or not not these models, but uh, this company before. So this is JKM. Uh, it had been going by the name Jackie Kim, and it seems that they're now settling on JKM, and they've started putting the brand actually on the box. And so this is this is a brand that I'm I'm very interested in. We'll have two models from this company in this video, and I actually have several others that will show up in in future videos um, but this is a Chinese brand and I love their packaging um, that's been the the biggest surprise is just how good quality I think their packaging is um, but we had seen them previously with uh, these Bugattis so they did the, the Bugatti Chiron and then the Bugatti, Bugatti Devo and both of these very, very nice uh, releases. And they have a very similar feel, uh, a quality to Mini GT. Um, and these, these two at least are, are very, very nice releases. Um, so we'll see with this Jeep, this is 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Uh, we'll see if that, that quality holds. Um, I believe this is a little bit of a newer casting i believe this one came after the bugattis so this is 
number 33. And let's see if we take a look at, yeah, so you can see here, this is number eight. Assuming those are related, which they actually may not be. Anyway, okay, I don't know. <laughs> There's very little information available on, on this brand. Um, but uh, it is, you know, again, it's a metal body, metal base, rubber tires, inserted details for taillights and headlights. Um, this one, I think the castings maybe not quite as crisp as a Mini GT would likely be. It's not bad. Uh, but it does, it does seem, or maybe it's the paint. There's something about it. It seems to be a little bit less, like I said, crisp. Um, this taillight's a little bit crooked. But, yeah, overall, it's not bad. It's a very interesting brand. Um, and uh, we'll have another model to look at in a, in a few minutes. So... But it's heavy model, you know, all metal, so it's quite heavy. And these are true 164 scale as far as I know. So that's uh, pretty, pretty cool. Next up uh, from Eric Carr, um, another GTR. Again, I think I had I had shown this one in a video just in the package a few weeks ago. I didn't I didn't open it. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and get this open now. And this one, the hood actually opens. Some of these, most of these GTRs that I've gotten, the hood has been very difficult to get open on it. So this one came open very easily. It's actually a nice, fairly nicely detailed engine in there. Um, so this is, this is a similar hill climb um, special edition, but this is just a GTR R35, which is different, I believe, than the Nismo version that I had had on my in my collection already. Yeah, you can see the front end is completely different. This area down here on the splitter details here different. The wing is different, and. Uh, rest of it, it's, it's overall, it's a pretty similar, pretty similar casting, but, um, so Eric Carr, you know, it's a brand I'm very interested in. I do like the brand. You have to really, you know, appreciate it for what it is, not try to think of it as a mini GT clone because that's not what it is. You know, they do opening parts. Um, they have a plastic base. They do have rubber tires. They are accurate. Um, as much as they can be, uh, they are true 164 scale as far as I can tell. And um, overall, I think they do a really good job. They're a little bit of a quirky brand, though. Um, they lots some of their models like have funny things like a, um, you know getting a a police van that comes with a dog character and things like that, which I I had shown in a past video. Uh, which I like. I think it's kind of cool. It gives the brand a, a unique, a unique character. Rather than just trying to make the, the world's most accurate models, they, uh, they have, they have a uniqueness to them. So, it's very cool. All right, another M2. This one, 1949 Mercury Custom. Love this casting. I am not going to take this one off the plinth. It's dealing with both of those screws. Is, is just takes too long. Uh, so this is a Holly livery. Um, not really the most exciting color. I do like I do like the yellow wheels with the uh, with the cream color though. Those steelies look really good. Goodyear tires. Um, yeah, it's but it's a little bit boring to me. The other versions of this I have, I, I like better, but it's not too bad. I like the yellow wheels. I do like that. So that looks, it's not bad. Not bad. Not the best, but not bad. Next up from Sparky, 
It's a McLaren uh, 720S GT3. This is another one that I had flashed in, in the past and uh, didn't open. But, <clears throat> sorry, I was like dropping stuff on the floor. I've got to keep the packaging together. Um, let me get this one off the base. So Sparky, you always have the little clip thingy that just pulls right off, which is very nice quality. And it's beautiful. Looks like it rolls. So, yeah, actually, let's see. Did this one roll? Yeah, it does. I think Sparky is another brand that is, is really starting to put effort into making sure that their models roll whenever possible without sacrificing the correct ride height. Um, so I commend them for that. Uh, that's, that is a very good thing because it is definitely not a quality that all of their releases have had. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool looking race livery. Uh, what was this from? So this was uh, Suzuka 10 hours in 2019. Planex SMA cam racing or make them. I don't know what that, how you would say that. Um, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, big fan of Sparky. So we'll add him to the, the race car collection here. And then next up we have another McLaren. This time it's from LCD model. And this is the first uh, first LCD model that I've, that I've purchased. And I uh, suspect it will not be the last. off the base and let's take a look at this so huh, the rear wheels turn actually both wheels turn does this roll it does sort of not well but, you know, LCD is a very, very detailed model. It's a nice carbon fiber pattern on the roof, back here through the engine, through the wing, and all the way down through the back. Tail lights. What is going on with these? And the tail lights are interesting. That doesn't seem right. Interesting. Kind of weird looking. So yeah, nice detail in the headlights. Carbon, carbon fiber again all along here. And looks like a gray interior. Lots of detail on the steering wheel and the dashboard. Seats have have a, a two tone. Sorry for shining the light into the camera. Two tone in on the seats. Lots of detail in the seats. Yeah, so very cool. Very nice model. Those mirrors look super fragile though. Brake discs and brake calipers that are fixed, even though the wheels do turn, which is very nice. And a beautiful metallic purple paint. So overall, very cool model. With some nice detail on these exhausts. Or yeah, exhausts, interesting. It's like a blown rear wing, like the exhaust blow over the rear wing. I wonder if that's, uh, well, you would have to assume that that's intentional for additional downforce. Very cool. Very nice. Put him there with the race cars. Um, and then changing gears again, 1970 Ford Mustang 428 SCJ. 
And again, I'm going to leave this on the base since it has two screws. This color's been a bit controversial. It's um, it's kind of a metallic, like a mist green. But this is a nice, very, or seems to be kind of a factory, factory style look. Um, it has a hood scoop on it, although maybe for this particular model of car that would have had that. I'm not familiar with the car, so I'm not sure. Nice detail all around. I'm going to guess this is probably a little bit large for scale. It looks, it looks just looks large to me. I don't have an, another example to compare it to. But I don't think this was a particularly large car. Um, an M2 is, is definitely not uh, you know, guaranteed to be 164 scale. But this looks overall very nice. I like this color. I know a lot of people haven't liked this color, but I, I, I like it. There's a little bit of sloppiness in the red paint there. But um, overall, it's a very cool release. Again, this was Auto Driver Series 78, and so far these are all fantastic. Um, so, switching gears again, this is from a brand called X-Car Toys. Um, we've seen a couple models from this brand in, in, in the past. And another Chinese company that is pretty interesting. And this is a, is a big, big, heavy, chunky model for this police uh, Mercedes Sprinter van. So, X Car Toys. Everything on this is, um, well, actually, you know, it has Chinese and English. Although they are not broadly available anywhere other than China. And they're they're most of the vehicles that they have are very, uh, you know, Chinese centric kind of things. Um, I believe this is a Hong Kong police livery van. This particular release is uh, 164 scale, although not all of their models are uh, 164 scale as far as I know. But it's got dually wheels on the back. These roll very nicely, actually really nicely. Um, and they do attempt to be accurate. in their, you know, in their reproductions of the vehicles that they, that they do. So these are very cool. Very, very nice addition to my uh, international police vehicle collection. Yeah, it's very cool. Very nice release. This is, this is probably the, the nicest of the X-Car toys releases that I've gotten so far. Very cool. Set him back there. Okay, one more from Mini GT. Actually, we have several more models in this video, but one more uh, release from Mini GT. So this one, so we got the, the GTLM version here. This is the 4 GT Mark II. This is not exactly the same vehicle. There are some differences. Um, this was, this car was sold as a uh, track car. So basically, you could buy one if you were, you know, very, very wealthy and lucky to be able to get one of the few that they made. Um, you couldn't drive it on the street, but you could, you know, take it to the racetrack and drive it around. And, yeah, this is really cool. Wow, this looks a lot better than I was expecting. It's kind of, this is very shiny. This gold is very shiny. The blue is actually very shiny. Yeah, this is really cool. Nice detail headlights. The same kind of details on the, the tail lights and everything. So, yeah. Very nice. So the biggest or most obvious difference between these two is the rear wing. So you can see that this you know is completely different and the way it mounts is different this is you know mounted on the back and and it's much smaller in reality 
This is, this is a larger, higher downforce from Ling. Um, the splitter actually is a little bit different too. This is bigger. Or the diffuser, not splitter. And the whole shape, rear shape of the vehicle is different. These are these are completely different. It's difference here too. Brake brake ducts. Yeah, this whole area is different. Interesting. I wasn't expecting these to be completely different castings, but it does appear that they are. Dive front dive planes are different. And headlight details different. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Very cool. Engine details all different. Very cool. Yeah, I almost didn't grab this because I was, you know, like, oh, it's just a GTLM with a different livery on it, but it's not. It's a completely different car. Or, you know, not, not completely different car, but it's a different casting. Or a, has significant modifications from the other casting. Very cool. Yes, very, very cool. All right, we can hang out back there. And... Uh, 1970 Dodge Super B 440, another M2 release, Auto Driver Series 78, and again we'll keep it on the plinth. Um, so black, nice chrome detail, painted headlights, small skinny front tires, thick drag style rear tires. Kind of dirty and yeah, dirty windows. It's unfortunate. Chrome wheels look good. Interior is pretty nice. A little sloppiness on the painted tail lights, but it's okay. Yeah, not bad. Of the cars, or of the M2 releases we've looked at so far, this one's probably my least favorite, but. It's still, still pretty nice. Uh, from Minnow 64, we have another Sierra Cosworth. So I've had a lot of these lately. Um, this is the fifth version that I have picked up. And this one is in a racing livery again. Ford Sierra RS 500 Cosworth number 22, Group A, Pumini Trampio. I'm sure that, that I said that completely wrong. 1988. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting cat logo on there. But I just love these. These have all been fantastic. All these Sierras. And this one's no exception. But we've we've looked at these in, in fair detail in the past, so I don't need to I don't need to spend a whole lot of time on this one. But I did want to show it off. Because it is really cool. Very nice. And then another Jackie Kim or JKM, sorry. You'll probably always be stuck in my head that this is Jackie Kim, but they have they didn't used to put this on here, now they put this on the box. This is a Hummer H2. This is a vehicle that I definitely would not have uh, considered a, a favorite of mine. In fact, I, Hummers always kind of annoyed me on the road. But, you know, when you're interested in a brand and wanting to check out the models that they put out, then if this is what they put out, that's what you have to buy. So again, in the, you know, it's got a... Inserted details for tail lights, uh, headlights. Really, are not not much there. The the this brush guard or whatever it's called is kind of hiding them. Big, chunky rubber tires. Metal base. 
nice uh, steps to get into the vehicle. Nice uh, light bar on the roof here, roof rack. This is pretty nice. It's very heavy. Actually, is this metal? That might be plastic. This one. Yeah. Front end detail is very nice. Skid, skid plate. Yeah, this this is uh, this is nicer than the Jeep was. Although the Jeep's not bad at all. This is this is a better model though. Very cool. And of course these roll. Yeah. Happy to have this. Not a huge fan of Hummers. Oh, it has rubberized mirrors too. Like like a Mini GT. Yep, so this one does as well. I didn't catch that, I think. Um, but again, so like a Mini GT. And that's something that they've added. The Bugatti does not have that. These are fixed. On both of the Bugattis. But they've got the rubberized mirrors now, just like Mini GT. So very similar quality to a Mini GT. Completely different casting or you know vehicles that they're choosing to to put out. I also have no idea if this stuff is licensed. That's the big question mark around these. Um, there is no indication of that on the on the packaging. But so, but otherwise, it's very cool. Let's see, put him on this box, and then again, many GT. Not Mini GT, M2, Thumper Cams, 1967 Chevrolet Nova SS. This looks really cool. Some metal flake, black, red stripe, red stacks or whatever these things are called. Look like maybe they're a little bit crooked. But so it's going to be another drag race version, skinny front tires. Nice wide rear tires. Slicks this time, so that's good. Um, this is this this particular vehicle obviously is not intended to drive on the road at all. It's more of a true drag car than the others that we looked at earlier. Kind of big flake, but it looks good. Yeah, this is very cool. Chrome wheels. Got a nice, uh, nice stance to it. And, yep. Very cool. All right. That's going to do it. Thank you for watching.